Hello, 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 my friends. Welcome to Off the Cuff with SDJ. And today I have the, uh, I know you're a firecracker, Susie. I already know <laughs> that. And I love it because that's what I feel like I am too. So my guest today is Susie Carter. Hello, my friend. Hello. Thank you for having me. And Absolutely. welcome everyone that's showing up, showing out, making it happen, living the dream. I'm excited to meet you and play with you and serve you. Awesome. Yeah. You. And, and, and I was just saying when you, when we first uh, jumped on, I just love you guys check out her wall behind her because I always, I always think of feng shui and whatever is behind you is what's supporting you. So look at that prosperity, passion. I think it's possibility dreams. I love it. That's just love it. Faith, commitment. Ooh, there's that word. Commitment. No, these are all my juicy words. Profits there, right? Because I'm all about the money, honey. That's right. I love it. And then the quarters. Well, I love that one. <laughs> who, who was that? Um, uh, Does not. Oh, wasn't it um, uh, PR's wife? Yes. I can't think of her name, but yes. Yeah, there. That's what just came up for me. Eleanor it's Roosevelt. Roosevelt. That's, <laughs> it. That's it. That's it. Woo. All right. All right, so um, I'm going to share, Susie. I want to read your bio because not everybody knows who you are. I know that might be surprising, but we're going to start there so people can get an idea of, of who you are and what our conversation today is about, my friends, is like she just said, it's about profits and it's about um, Susie. So Susie is, uh, she started out as a low paid hairdresser trying to support her two little girls, but working for someone else came, became a challenge to say the least. So she decided to do whatever it took to create her own business. After much blood, sweat, and tears mixed with cheap mascara, I love that piece, <laughs> she went on to create not one, but two $10 million companies. Her core genius is the ability to simplify complicated issues by creating simple, proven systems that are guaranteed to create dramatic growth for any company. She's helped over 100,000 entrepreneurs increase their revenues by more than 3,000%, 3,000%. And worked with top business moguls, including John Asaroff, Lisa Nichols, Steve Harvey, Doug Carter, and Paul Mitchell. Her newest book, number 10, her 10th book, Power Your Profit, is a bulletproof startup finish, start to finish plan for taking your business from startup mode to the multi-million dollar mark. All right, we get to talk about the money. Excited. <laughs> I get excited, like, oh my gosh, she's great. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That's a, that woman sounds so amazing. That's awesome. So like, sometimes you just forget like what you've created in the world, who you be, because you're always on to the next and running to the next. I think everyone should do their bio every year, right? Update it. We call it a badass list. Put your badass list together. What made, what were the things you did this year? Because even in a year, just miracles occur. And we are playing so big and very rarely do we stop to just acknowledge the breakthroughs that we do. We are not normal people, right? right. We're the top 1% in the space of money earners, learners, people committed to their growth and development, or you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't, you know, find Sunny, you wouldn't find me, you wouldn't find the people that you're being mentored by. So I just really acknowledge what you're up to, but what, what the tribe's up to. Yeah, that's actually a great idea to write it once a year, because I think that's so true. We're just, we're just head down and just going, going, going. And then you look up and you're like, oh my God, I've, I've done some shit. Right. <laughs> or I forget, like I forget the stuff I've already done. I'm like, whatever, that's over. I'm like done and to go. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, so you started as a hairdresser, and um, and then I saw in here that you said okay, and then you worked with Paul Mitchell. So that's yeah. got to be freaking cool. I mean, right. starting as the low paid hairdresser. So how did that? How did you kind of evolve? So obviously you got tired of not making any money. Um, that but was the biggest one. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be broke. Broke and me don't go well together. <laughs> Right. So as a hairdresser, I found myself in a position, you know, I, I got married young, right? I just, I was grown and I thought I knew how to pick a husband. Look, Sonny, he had muscles, a checkbook, <laughs> a car, and he was fine. Oh, well, hey. 
you must be a good husband. That's right. All the qualifications when you're young, right? What else do you need? Mm -hmm. Well, he wasn't a good husband, right? He was a nice man, not a good husband. So I found myself divorced with two little kids. My baby was six months old. My oldest was 18 months old. And it was an ugly divorce. It was an ugly relationship. And I had no child support, no alimony, and I had to take care of my children. So my I couldn't, there was no longer an excuse or no longer an option to not make money because I had to pay my rent. Mm -hmm. You know, my girlfriend and I moved in together. She had two kids, so she just got divorced. We had four kids in a two-bedroom apartment. Wow. <laughs> you know, make That's, it happen. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, I got to make this happen. <laughs> and so I quickly studied how do you really leverage this thing? I was an amazing hairdresser, but 15% of your financial success, doesn't matter what vocation you're in, 15% of your financial success is the vocation. The other 85% is your business, your systems, your strategy, your sales, your pricing, your communication. Mm -hmm. And so I, it became my, my passion to figure this thing out for myself and for my children first. Mm -hmm. And so quickly I made, a, I made six figures and then I did a quarter of a million dollars. The average hairdresser back in, at that time was making $30,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And the, no one in our industry was teaching the business. Not right. really no one. There were a few people, but they were normally overweight white men. And mm -hmm. you know, as a young businesswoman, I wanted to see us. I wanted right. to see a woman that was accomplished and successful, especially in the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. Right. Everyone that was in any kind of power, they were men. And no disrespect to men. I love men. I appreciate men. I, I have, you know, men who are mentors. But at that stage in my life, I wanted to see me. Sure. I a woman in here, how did you do it? And how did you balance your kids? And, you know, being a single mom, how do you balance your kids and build a business? So I'm like, I need to tell these people how to do this. I need to share because nobody shared with me. And I started just speaking and teaching, you know. Two, two hairdressers particularly? Yeah, two okay. hairdressers particularly. Mm -hmm. Yep. I linked up with um, Paul Mitchell mm -hmm. and um, started doing cluster classes for Paul Mitchell, just teaching them how to build the business of the business. Mm -hmm. I, so, you know, looking at retail and looking at chemicals, all my clients, Sunny, were chemically dependent on me. <laughs> <laughs> Every client that sat down got chemical services and retail products. And, and that's really how I did a quarter of a million dollars a year, three days a week as a hairdresser, mm -hmm. was leveraging that. And so right. then clients would say, oh, my God, I love what you do. Do you have a book? I'm like, no, I'm just a hairdresser. You know, sometimes you just, oh, no, I'm just this. Oh, no, yeah. that's no. And you know, I believe in God and God was knocking, write the book, write the book, write the book. And I'm like, I don't know how to write a book. So I'm like, all right, I'll write a book. So then I wrote a book. Right. Then I, you know, went on the circuit, hawking the hawk in the $20 book. And they're like, oh, love the book. I hate to read. You have an audio. I'm like, no, I don't have, I just wrote the book. Cut me some slack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my, the training company really came from my clients. I just wanted to help my tribe and my community. I just wanted to help people so they didn't have to do what I did. Cause that was very frustrating trying to figure it out and wanted to be a role model to go, you can do, if I can do it as a single mom with two little kids mm -hmm. and I wasn't in a big city, people assume I was in a big city. I was in Vista, California, mm -hmm. right? So that's not a big city, very rural community, but knowing how to build a business, build your network. So right. then grew the largest training and development company in the beauty industry, mm -hmm. right? And just kept building it. My first book that I published, the publisher denied us. They rejected me, Sunny. They rejected See me. See how that is. Boy, <laughs> take this out. I know. So, you know, Sunny and I were talking about it earlier. Nobody tells me no, right? Nobody's the boss of me. And so they, when they told me no, I'm like, fine, I will open my own publishing company. Mm -hmm. So I started a publishing division and we published all our work under Creative Card of Publishing, which was our publishing house, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, not knowing, but will I, what I will say, the caveat is you never know what happens. The company that denied me ended up being the company that bought our company for millions. So they, bought <laughs> that. they just didn't buy it for that 10 grand I originally was trying to hawk it for, right? Uh, there's that karma, right? There's that silver yeah. lining. So <laughs> we made millions from that product line in that, you know, book. That whole business and that book still is taught in cosmetology schools today. Mm -hmm. So that really was just a legacy play for my industry. And then I was spe on the speaking circuit and I went to learn how to raise money because I was building this online community. Back in 1999, we built the largest membership community uh, in the beauty industry. And again, we won uh, Microsoft's top technology company of the year award. And I don't know anything about technology, mm -hmm. right? But I knew 
at what we needed for the industry. And right. so I went to this conference and again, they're teaching people how to raise money, but these people aren't building businesses. They're just raising money, but have no infrastructure. I'm like, y'all need to teach people how to do this business part, the systems part. They're like, great, you teach it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about their business. They'll be you perfect for it. You've got a great track record. You do it every day. I'm like, okay, but I'm gonna let them know. I don't know anything about their business. Right. Again, God knocking, giving you opportunity, but you keep going, no, 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 no. No, that's not for me. That's not for me. <laughs> and so I started teaching and then regular entrepreneurs, you know, Sonny would come up to me, you coach me. I'm like, mm -mm -mm, I don't know anything about your business. And they're like, we don't care. We just like you and we like your philosophy. So after saying no, you know, for a couple of years, I said no, right? Because I was over here building this other business. I'm like, I ain't got time for that. Yeah. So they, they kept asking. So I'm like, fine. Now, this is not how you do your pricing. I just want to say this before I say this statement. <laughs> you will learn more from me when I tell you the truth about the stupid stuff I did, as well as the great stuff that I did. I hear you, girl. <laughs> so I said, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to double my fees. I'm going to double my fees, and then they're not going to want to pay it. And then they will leave me alone. Well, no, they did not leave me alone. They're like, perfect. I will pay that. I'm like, oh my God, I got to figure out how to do this. <laughs> and the beauty in that is business is business is business, right? There's indicators that we're going to change, right? There's things that we're going to look at that are differently. There's different things in industries, but at the end of the day, it's a roadmap, right? It's a system. And so I have manufacturing companies. I have fencing companies. I have land landscape architect companies. I have beauty businesses. We have speakers, authors, writers that are in our tribe. We have startup companies to multi-million dollar companies. So when you understand the foundation of business, it takes all the scary away, sure. right? When you understand what, what is that roadmap that I need to follow to have the results that I want to get. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be hard. Only 1% of business owners hit that million dollar mark. 1%. Wow. There's 30 million small businesses in the country today. I'm like 1% hit the million dollar mark and that's gross. That's not net. Wow. That's not hey, that's gross. Mm -hmm. So I my commitment is I want every person first and foremost to hit that. I want to change that 1%. Mm -hmm. Right? I want that to be the 88%. 88% right. of small businesses are failing. I want to flip the switch. Sure. 88% hitting a million dollars and then let's start going into 2 million, 5 million, 10 million. And it can be done. If I could do it, you know, as a hairdresser. Now, I, I did not say I do have my PhD. So I, I didn't know if I said that, which is my you public. Didn't say that. Yes. So I've worked really hard for that. That was my public high school diploma. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can do it with my public high school diploma and education just like this, anyone can do it. Yeah. You know, it takes tenacity, it takes knowing what to do and when to do it. Right. The challenge in our industry today, and I'm talking about educational industry, transformational industry, business education, is someone will say, oh, start a membership site. Okay, but you can't start a membership site without having the marketing plan, the sales plan, mm -hmm. right? The funnels put in place. There's so much that has to be put in place yeah. to start a membership site. Oh, or just do Facebook ads. Okay, but then if you don't have anything to capture them with and you don't have a follow-up sequence and you don't have client fulfillment, you're we're wasting a ton of money. Yeah. And so we have to build the foundation first and build it on cement. Mm -hmm. Most small businesses are on sinking sand because you get caught up in the sparkle and the squirrel, sparkle, squirrel, you know, it's like diamonds, oh, the money. And I'm all about the money, right? But we got to have the structure in place, right? You talked about the book, Power Your Profits, mm -hmm. right? This is the structure from start to finish of how to build a multi million dollar business. So you can either figure it out yourself the hard way. Right? right, or you can get the roadmap. Mm -hmm. And so it's taking each piece of your business and systematically growing it. And the only way that I can produce 3000%, right, with clients is because just follow, just follow it, right? Just follow yeah. it. My launch year last year, so we relaunched this brand, right? So I was working with Lisa Nichols and I ran her company for 10 years and took her company from 800,000 to 10 million, right? I'm the secret behind the secret. Right. I'm the <laughs> <I love that. laughs> we built the infrastructure mm -hmm. and I told her from day one, the goal is that if anything ever happened to us or me, you will still have a business, right? You, you will not be held hostage by me. I want this business to live beyond both you and I, you right. can sell it. I want it to live on. Right. So we, 
went our separate ways a, a year and a half ago. Like it was time to change, time to you know transition. It happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. And so my launch year, the first year with no database. I want people to hear this because people were making it too hard. No database. We had about 5,000 friends in Facebook, which was like my friends and my family. And I wasn't building that. I was building Lisa's company and motivating the masses. Mm -hmm. We had no press. I had gotten all the press for Lisa. She was the star. I was the engine. Mm -hmm. So I need people to hear because they think I either got the hookup. Oh, she had the hookup or she had this old, whole thing in place. Mm -mm. Started from scratch for the first year from scratch. Following the book. Following the book. We did $1.3 million in the first 10 months. Mm -hmm. So when you know what to put in place, second year, we'll do 3 million, right? Even inside of an economic crisis, right? Because when you follow the structure, it's businesses like, remember when you were in school or if you go to the gym now, right? And you have the combination locks. Yeah. Right. So it was 24, 37, 24. Mm -hmm. If you did 25, 36, 25, doesn't matter you got one number right, it is not gonna open. Doesn't matter if you get two numbers right, it's not gonna open. If you go right instead of left in that middle number, it's not gonna open, that's business. You might have two or three things that are right, but you're one tick off. One tick off, you can't open it, the money's not coming, yeah. right? You have one bad person, that's one tick, right? You, you make the wrong buying decision, right? You buy something wrong, you don't put something in place, or if you don't have a database, like when we went on Oprah Winfrey, with Lisa's company, we had a marketing partner, but she didn't have her own database back then. Like did not have like Infusionsoft, ClickFunnels. None of that was, you know, that was almost 17, 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we had this tsunami of people that came, but there was nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. So the marketing partner, we sold a product. So that captured some people, which was great. We sold about $300,000. Mm -hmm. But how much money did we miss and lose because that wasn't on the, t but it, was, it wasn't even in place. Yeah. Like, like ow, ow. Yeah, that's an ow. Uh-huh. Right, that's a kid, a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going on podcasts or getting press or getting interviews and you have no capture tool. You have no structure in place. What do you do with them when they come? Sure. Right. So there's so much importance that you've got to have that foundation in place that so that when they do come, because mm -hmm. like, do this right, we're gonna make them come. That's right. right. We have we were in over eight thousand outlets last year, from no press to over eight thousand media outlets. I gotta have someone for there to go. Right. Right. So making sure that all your little ticks on your combination are in line. So when it opens, it opens big. Right. Right. Sorry, so really so let me Is ask you this. So if, if we have people that are in that very beginning kind of stage, you said you know build on concrete. Not on quicksand, <laughs> yeah. Um, which totally, absolutely. So, is there one like if you were going to say one thing for the foundation that's the most important? What would yeah. that be to you? The first thing is I got to get it out of your head. See, mm -hmm. you people have a plan, but it's all here. Mm -hmm. And so, then let's say you come onto my team, and you know your expertise is speaking and sales and consulting. But if you don't know what's in my head, you're going to do what you think that's in your head. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, what you were doing is going this way. You know, now it's it's veering off. So mm -hmm. you've got to get it out of your head and you got it on paper. And that is called a business plan. Don't freak out. <laughs> Nobody wants to do them. But listen, if you have them, the only reason I'm able to work with clients and have exponential growth is because we stop. We put the plan together. Who's that ideal client? To me, there's an ideal client and there's an ideal qualified client because a mm -hmm. lot of people are are uh, confusing fans with clients. Mm -hmm. Your Instagram fans, Facebook fans, those aren't clients. Mm -hmm. Those aren't even leads. Those right. are just fans. Those are thumbs up, mm -hmm. which, OK, you have to have for certain indicators like to come on shows and to have some influence. But they're not paying bills. Right. <laughs> we can have right. a conversion strategy. So when you put your business plan together, you're really thinking about before you run, right? Because most people start a business, they have no idea how much it costs. Mm -hmm. You got to invest money. There's no way around yeah. investing money in your business. You have to. Now, whether you're bootstrapping, I have built businesses on bootstrapping, but that might tell you there's money everywhere. 
There is money everywhere. I've had people loan me money. I've borrowed money. I've refinanced my home, right? I borrowed from my retirement account. I've maxed up my credit cards, right? right? So that's just entrepreneurship. Right. And I find entrepreneurs are like, I'm going to tip my toe in, but I'm not ready yet. I'm going to tip my toe in. Well, you're not going to have results if you don't jump. Right. right? You got to jump. Right? Mm -hmm. I've jumped. I've risked it all to get it all. Yeah. Now, scared, knees knocking, right? Teeth chattering, going, this shit better work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hope there's a net down there. Right. But I got the plan, right? I got the plan. I got the book. I got the plan, right? I, I eat, sleep, and drink this, right? So it's not theory. It's not concept. And I think that's what I love about coaching with my clients is I'm not giving you theory. I'm in it now. Mm -hmm. We're just talking to have a, a program called Global Leadership Program. And we have about 30 entrepreneurs in that program. And, you know, they're freaking out. We're spending a lot of money and we're, you know, we're not just seeing the result. I'm like, I got you. I'm spending a lot of money. I'm just might be managing more zeros or spending more zeros than you, but I'm playing the same game. I can't let my mind freak me out. And the only way, Sonny, I don't freak out in this time is I go to my plan, right? So when the pandemic happened, I went to my plan and went, how do I adjust? What do I need to do? Yeah. adjusted my projections, adjusted my sales strategy, and then tweak the plan. So when I get in freak out mode, because I'm human, like everybody else, I'm going to freak out every now and then. I go, what I say I was going to do? <laughs> How did I say I was going to do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's important that you want to have a tribe that is, you know, walking the talk. Because what I don't know if you're seeing this, Sunny, in the, um, in the industry, a, I, a lot of people's character is being... Mm -hmm. um, really challenged yeah. what they said they were and then who they're being is like wait a minute yes that's you know? happening all over right now it's, it's really fascinating to me isn't it mm -hmm. like wow this person has proclaimed this for years yeah. and then who they're being now is in such misalignment to the brand yeah. Yeah. Right? I believe it's because they don't have someone holding them accountable. I mm -hmm. believe because they don't have a coach. They start they they start believing that bio that you read, like, oh, I am all that in a bag of chips. And right. I mm -hmm. if I'm not humbled, if I don't find a leader, a coach that's 10 steps ahead of me, my right. ego run away with me. Mm -hmm. so I want people to realize like, oh, as an entrepreneur, I always have a coach, right? Mm -hmm. I have financial coaches. Mm -hmm. A business coach, I have a personal development coach, aka therapist. <laughs> <laughs> right. I have a fitness coach, right? I have a health coach that helps me. You know, I'm getting a little more seasoned. <laughs> I'm spicy, but I'm seasoned. <laughs> and so the other day. We're we're in mid midlife, and I'm like, what? Wait, right. <laughs> I'm not ready for midlife. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I know, girl. I just celebrated a 56 year birthday. I'm like, so oh my God, that's just old. Uh, you remember like your parents at that age? My parents were old, right? Yeah, 56 was old back in the day, but it isn't old anymore. It's young. Well, this is not going down easy, girl. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make the millions to keep this up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. So, so they, they, they need a plan. That's what we know for sure. They need a plan and figuring out, you know, what their business plan is, putting it on paper. So that's number one. Now here's something you said that I see in my community all the time, all the time, all the time is, uh, people's relationships to money. Yes. Because that is the little voice that's, you know, who do you think you are? Or it's you don't deserve it. Or it's money doesn't grow on true, whatever it is. So I'm certain you address that in that book of yours. Yeah. So we have some really great programs. Like when you buy the book, you get some bonuses. And one of the bonuses is called Wisdom and Wealth. Mm -hmm. And so when you buy the book for $28, you get about $5,000 worth of bonuses. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you can get that kind of ROI, but with your profit coach, I'm just saying. Yeah, that's great. But in, you know, 30 years working with businesses, the thing that I noticed is I can make you millions, but if we don't change your financial mindset, mm -hmm. you're going to spend 2 million. Yeah. Right? And you're, gonna, you're always going to be broke chasing money. Mm -hmm. So our, our money beliefs are inherited right? They're inherited beliefs. They come from your mother. They come from your father, your grandparents. They come from ancestors, right? You have cultural beliefs about money, 
Mm -hmm. Right. Think about all the the slang that people say about different cultures, about money and, you know, people being cheap or not cheap. I don't need to say it. You know who that, you know, what people are referring to, to go, well, what are my beliefs? Because we don't really, once we become adults, redefine any, but we don't redefine our love beliefs. We don't define our money beliefs. We don't define like my values, mm -hmm. you know, unless you're really awake and conscious, which a lot of this community is, mm -hmm. but let's look at money to go because you have generational beliefs, yes. right? Then you have community. What does your community say about money? Like if you listen, what are people's conversation? You know, I'm broke or I can rub two, you know, nickels together to get a dime or there's more month than money or money. Like you said, money doesn't grow on trees. Mm -hmm. So unconsciously that stuff is running you. Now I grew up with nine brothers and sisters. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we had no money. Mm -hmm. And when I say, girl, we were poor, I don't mean the kind of poor, like we were so happy. We didn't know we were poor. No, no, no. I'm talking about government cheese poor. <laughs> talking about You share everything. I talk about we had um, 1,200 square feet, 11 people living in the house, one bathroom, kind of poor, mm -hmm. right? So there was Bobby, Ronnie, Stevie, Terry, Joni, Shelly, Susie, Kelly, Debbie, <laughs> and we were in the military. <laughs> So we shared everything. Everything was a hand-me-down. Mm -hmm. So I had to really look at, you know, there was never enough. So that was, that's a big one that runs me is there's never enough. You're not good enough. You're always competing when you're in a big family. You're always competing for something. You're competing for food. <laughs> you're competing for time, right? Or you're hiding, right? Because you want to stay out of trouble. <laughs> right. So, you start looking that that created a really strong foundation. The beauty is the beauty and the gift that my dad gave me is he said, Sue, you can have whatever you want. Just go work for it. Go get a job. Mm -hmm. I could do that. So yeah. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 10, 11 years old, yeah. you know, mowing lawns, washing windows, cleaning toilets, babysitting, you name it. If I could get a dollar for it, I was doing it. Right? That was freedom to you. That, that was how you got out of that. I really just wanted to buy my own underwear. Can I just be serious with you right now? <laughs> I do not want hand me down underwear, right? Wow. Five sisters. No, mm -hmm. I want my own underwear. Mm -hmm. But just that freedom to go. I didn't want anyone telling me no. Sure. Right. So, okay, no. So, how much? What do I need to do? So, if it allowed me that I got that entrepreneur spirit to like, what else can I sell? What else can I do? What else could I? you know, kind of looking at the talents that I had, the skills that I had, what did the neighborhood need? And we were in a, you know, we weren't in a rich neighborhood. We we're in a poor neighborhood. But look, you could always find a babysitting job. You could always find a cleaning job. You could always find something that somebody didn't want to do. Not going to have to negotiate prices, but I got some new underwear. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then with that many kids. So, you know, that many kids, we didn't have sweets. I don't like sweets. I know I'm a weirdo. Didn't like chocolate. But my I'm brother, that way too. Isn't that interesting? Well, I like pickles. Give me some pickles. Me too. I'll take a pickle any day. Or me almost too. pickled. Yeah. I know Lisa said one year for her, for my birthday, she goes, So what's your favorite cake? I'm like, mm, I don't like cake. She goes, Okay, what's your favorite sweet? I'm like, mm, I don't like sweets. She goes, Okay. So for my birthday, she got me one of those big jar of pickles Pickle. that you know, Price Club, yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm thinking about it now and I'm salivating. <laughs> So I learned early on that sweets were a commodity. So like we would have, we'd make cookies and we would bag the cookies. So you got five cookies. I got five cookies. You know, they, we all got five cookies. And I watched my brother and sister eat the cookies. Now imagine nine kids, two parents, so 11 people in the household. Mm -hmm. Think about Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. Think about the dishes on Thanksgiving dinner. We had Thanksgiving dinner every day. Because mm -hmm. we had that many people every day. So, and we didn't have a dishwasher. We were the dishwasher. Right. So, I learned early on if I save my cookies, my brother Terry, my brother <laughs> Steve, the girls, the girls weren't down with it. The girls were like, I don't want a cookie that bad. But the boys, uh -huh. so I would negotiate, I'll give you two cookies if you do the dishes tonight. And they were like, I want two cookies. <laughs> I love this game, right? You, are, you were already exchanging money and bartering and learning how the whole system worked way yeah. back then. Way back then, not knowing, but just looking at how do you leverage? How do you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I look back now, I'm like, oh, I was just kind of a little genius. And then Halloween candy. I like candy. Look, I could keep that candy till Easter. And then you got an Easter basket. Then I would keep that candy till Christmas. Then you got Christmas candy. <laughs> And, th and that, you know, that many kids, they don't care if that candy's stale. They just want candy, right? Right. <laughs> right. Learn to barter a bit.
And that's in chapter four of, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what can you barter? What can you train? <laughs> no, that's great. That, that entrepreneurial spirit your dad planted in, in, within you so early, just boom. Such a blessing, right? I am who I am because of that statement and just really looking at it. Yeah. Right? And, you know, it, I wasn't ever really good in math. And most people, most small businesses, their biggest fail point is the finances, right? Mm -hmm. They can make money, but they don't want to look at, every, like, I don't want to look at her. I don't know what it means. They'll get a P&L, they'll stick it in a drawer. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, chapter eight in the book is math is money, money is fun. Because mm -hmm. I created these spreadsheets for me because I get my P&L from my accountant and I didn't understand it. It was like, okay, wait, why does this one say I have money and this one says I don't? And why do I need two? <laughs> I have one business. Why do I have two of the paper that are completely different, right? A lot of people are right there. A lot of people are right there. Right. So cash and accrual. So I'm like, I need to put a spreadsheet together so I can wrap my head around it. And I did it you know, on the down low, because I don't want to feel stupid with my colleagues, mm -hmm. right? And then I would be on a coaching call with a client. I'm like, I'll share my spreadsheet with you. <laughs> oh, you know, like, yes, share a, spread share a spreadsheet with me. So I'm sharing spreadsheets like, oh my gosh, it's like magic. I'm like, I know it's magic. <laughs> and realize like, oh, let's take this complicated thing called business finance, right? We have something called the cash calculator that really looks at how many qualified leads do you need to get in order to close a hundred thousand, ten, you know, a million, ten million? So you're breaking it down by these are the leads, but these are the qualified leads. Because again, some people are really good at getting leads, but they they can't afford them or they don't want that. So you really got to dial into that person that wants you, right? Can afford you, can pay you, pay you on time. And for me, I gotta love you and you gotta love me. I'm done pushing people uphill. Right. right? I'm a little too seasoned yeah. for that. Yeah. You know, there is no sprinkle fairy dust and, and I'm going to get in the ditch with you and I'm going to fight with you and I'm going to be there with you cheering you on. But you got to do the work, too. You got to get that shovel with me. I'm not going to shovel. I'm not shoveling your stuff. That's, that's your shoveling to do. That's your you already shoveling. Did yours. You already did yours. Right. I shoveled mm -hmm. my stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we, I love and, you know, that's why I love business finance, because I thought I was dumb because I didn't get it. And when I really just started telling people. Like, here's what I made up. It could help you. It could not help you. Like base price worksheet. You know, I realized when I owned the salon, we had a million dollar salon and spa and we weren't profitable. Now, and I, I'm meticulous. And so I, our average ticket was there, right? We had a high average ticket. But what I found is that most of us set our pricing based on what we can produce, right? Mm. So I, I'm the superstar in my business. And so if someone doesn't create superstar results every single day, the business won't be profitable, yeah. right? So either you're undercharging, that's, you know, common in this industry, but I want to know what should you charge, mm -hmm. right? So I have something called the base price worksheet is here's based on your capacity, based on how many hours that you're working, based on your overhead and your profit. Here's how much you should charge. Mm -hmm. We were losing $5 on every single client, right? Wow. When we own the salon. Well, wow. you took $5, and you times that by 300 customers a month, that's $1,500 a month. Then you times that times 12, you're losing $18,000 a year. And you're like, how am I losing? And if you're not looking at the detail, right? right. And really digging in, $5 doesn't sound like a lot. Mm -hmm. $5 is a lot exactly. when you're accumulating it by you mm -hmm. know, the number of clients, the number of hours, the number of technicians, or the number of people that you have, the number of salespeople that you have. Right. So it's all those little things that profit that creates profit or the financial freedom. in the Right. Business. Well, and I think it's so important what you said that, you know, because I, I see this a lot in, in my industry with with a lot of the people that I mentor is they're scared to look like yeah. they're scared to look at the numbers like they don't understand them one. And because they don't understand them, they're they're afraid. And, and, and I think you saying, you know, I was that way, too. And right. I figured it out. Right. And you can you can learn. I mean, that, that's the thing is you can learn. Take a class, get a get a spreadsheet, do something that organizes it for yourself. Because otherwise, I, I know my husband was a contractor. And for years, um, the last couple of years when the crash happened and, and we lost houses and we lost spec homes, all kinds of things. But 
what we discovered is that he didn't like looking at all that stuff. So he didn't. And for the last year, he was paying to work. Yes. Hey, why would you pay to work? Right. Like You have to look. You have to look. Well, cash flow can be so deceiving, right? Because you, if yeah. you're doing a million or two million, you got money coming in, but that yeah. doesn't mean you're making money. Right. You're cashing a $60,000 check. So you're like, yeah, I'm making money. And you forgot, oh, I just paid 80 grand out. Hmm, right. That does not equal. Yeah. That's that shell game at a whole nother level, right? That you don't want to get into. Yeah. So manage it now. Understand it now. I would much rather know, am I a slow bleeder? Right. Or do I need to slip my wrist to go? Yeah. At least just be brave enough to look at here's where I'm at. Yes. Right? And every business goes like this. Right. So if you look at, I think in business, we're trying really hard. Right. This is business. Right. It goes up. It goes down. Right. Yep. And yep. Depending, right now, most businesses are on the downside. Mm -hmm. Right. Coming up on the, on the upside. This is business. Right. But we're trying to get like this. Mm -hmm. trying, I just want it to be chill. I just want it right. to be. OK, so if I'm in a hospital and this happens, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Peace yeah. out. I'm tapping out. Yep. Right. Business we're doesn't matter now. Then, right. Then this means we're alive. Right. So, you know, I want people to see that you're, we're going to have the valley. Right. And that's why I like to share my valley, my valleys and my hard part, because you just you think, oh, Sunny's never experienced that. She doesn't know. Oh, girl, let's we could talk. Let's go story to story. For sure. We can get anywhere in business and it all be butterflies, rainbows, you no, know. No. That's where we learn the most, too, really. And oftentimes I, I like you said, I teach a lot of people what not to do. Right. Know? So I got I got a lot of that for you. Yes. You know, but that's transparency mm -hmm. to go, wow, if she can go through that, if he can go through that, if they can give you one tip. I don't want to just teach from the mountaintop. Yes, I have amazing success and I want to teach best practices. Right. Right. And then go, but when you're down, that you and I were just talking about that. When, when you're down, that's character. Yeah. When you're down, who are you going to be? How are you going to serve clients? Right. So in this market, the minute it went down, we just did a bunch of free education. Like do not stop. Yeah. Do not put on the brakes. Do not cut fat, but don't cut the meat. Your coaches right. are meat. Your coaches are meat. If they're helping you produce something, create something, make something, they're the meat. If it's just feel good and, you know, you're not doing the work, that's fat, right? Mm -hmm. Be really clear. I did it in my own business. I had to cut the fat yeah. to go, okay, what, what's not essential to mm -hmm. keep everything going, right? And then we're slowly integrating it back in. But we, nobody knows how long this was going to be or how long we were going to recover, right? So you've got to be fiscally responsible for yourself and your family. Yeah. Right. I'm about let's create that generational wealth. Let's create a legacy. Business is supposed to give us freedom. It's mm -hmm. supposed to give us a lifestyle that a job cannot. Mm -hmm. Right. So my goal is to go. What is that number for you? Everybody has a number. Sure. Right. Some people it's a hundred grand. You know, if you're not making any money, that's the first number. Well, if you want to make a hundred grand, we got to gross two hundred grand. Mm -hmm. Right. Fifty percent goes back into the business. You know, and that's if you're lean and mean, mm -hmm. and fifty percent goes to your compensation. Right. So I want people to know that when you follow a, a structure, it's like cooking. Some people cook, some people don't cook, but we all get the concept cooking, right? And if you're good at it and you've been seasoned for a while, you don't need a recipe, but most people need a recipe to start. Right. And then from the recipe, we tweak and we throw seasonings in or we delete something or add something more. That's business. There's a recipe, right? This is the recipe. Right. What seasoning do you need to put in? You put your own secret sauce. Right. You put your own. What's that unique factor that you have? What's your sparkle factor? Right. But follow a structure, whether it's mine or somebody else's. Right. Like, don't, it doesn't have to be hard. Entrepreneurs are making it way too hard on the yeah. struggle bus. Like, oh, but Susie, you don't understand. No, girl, I don't understand. <laughs> I understand. Trust and believe. <laughs> believe me. You understand. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I love I love that um, that you are sharing because I think that's the piece that that I, I know for me, I didn't know I was creating a business when I started creating one. I was just doing the next thing. Like kind of like you said, like the client would ask for this and I would just do that. And then the client would ask for this and I would just do that. And right. oh well, what about this? Okay, what about that? And and so and then after a few years then I'm like, wait a minute, I have a business, you know, like, like that's kind of how it happened for me. But 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 most people now they go, I want to create a business. 
Right. And then they need to take the take the steps. And so it sounds like you've got really a blueprint, basically. Yeah, definitely a blueprint. Yeah. But imagine where you'd be now, like if you knew in the very beginning you were creating a business, because we don't know what we don't know. Like that's exactly. on, that's half the shit we do, y'all. I'm just saying. Right. I remember I used to tell my staff, I'm just making this stuff up. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I started getting too big and they're like, What? You don't know what you're doing? I'm like, okay, I can't share this anymore. <laughs> in the beginning, your first employees are entrepreneurial spirit with you, right? They're like, I'm in there. You know, as you get bigger, you start to get more corporate. You know, people need more direction and leadership. I'm like, oh, I can't, can't tell them those things. <laughs> but imagine what would happen if, you know, when you started your business, really sat down and go, this is how much I need to invest in my marketing. And if I want to build it quick, here's how you're, you're going to pay money one way or the other. You're yep. going to pay it in time or you're going to pay it in dollars. Yeah. Right. To go, hmm, how do I get money so that I can ramp it up quickly and either pay myself back, pay my investors back. And look, there's a ton of money around you and people would invest in you because they don't have the courage to do what we do. Mm -hmm. We are cuckoo pants. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they see someone like myself or Sonny like, oh, I want to play, but I'm not that brave. OK, well, let's invest in a product. Let's invest in, you know, something together that you can do a rev share on or like really look at be creative. That's what I love about entrepreneurship. We get to create. Exactly. We're not defined by nine to five. We're not defined by the man, whoever the man is. I don't know where the man is or who he is. But somebody's defining them. <laughs> yeah, me either. And, and and that's exactly what I think so many entrepreneurs want is they want that freedom. But then when they they're working so hard that they lose the freedom because they don't know how to do it. So they're they're then they get stuck. And 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 absolutely you have to you have to invest money. And a lot of people have a hard time doing that. But right. you gotta invest money, you gotta have a teacher or a coach or a uh, something that helps you. I mean you don't have to, but why waste the time? You know, right. you can learn from all of our mistakes. Why not? You right. Know? Right. Yeah. And then really look at and, and why why not and then if why not, what are you afraid of? Because mm -hmm. fear leads you to believe that where you are right now is a safe place and going forward is a risk. Right. But the truth is, we're actually always at risk when we're standing still, risk of stagnating, but more importantly, risk of missing out on your own destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, when people on their deathbed, they're not saying, oh, you know, I wish I, you know, would have spent, you know, more time at work. It's like, I wish I would have built the legacy. I wish I would have contributed to my family. I wish I would have like wrote that book. I wish I would have risk, risked more, right? We, we're trying to create this safety and safety is a delusion, yeah. right? It's a delusion. And it's, death. It's, right. death. It's, it's It's where you just, your spirit just dies. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't know that until you play out on the skinny branch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's exciting, right? When you really achieve something huge, it's like, oh my, I can't believe I just did that. You know, mm -hmm. you say something and then you work your booty off to make it happen. You're like, yeah. so rewarding. You yeah. know, it's like raising good children. Like my, my girls are grown now, right? They're 31 and 33. And I look at them and they're amazing women, just so moved by who they are in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. My youngest one is an entrepreneur and she's a mom, two kids. I'm watching her be a mom. I'm like, if I was half that good, mm -hmm. I did a good job. Right. And my oldest one is an equity investor. So she works for one of the largest in, uh, equity firms in L.A., and she was doing my client's profit and loss when she was in eighth grade. Like that kid has always been, you know, it, huh? and she's such a, she's such a godly woman and a giving woman and a generous woman that I'm just in awe of who they are as women. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how about well them? Yeah. Didn't do too bad in that <laughs> uh, in single mom. You. Sometimes <laughs> you that's why we're right. single moms. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. we our dysfunction, every family's dysfunctional, for but sure. Well, at least we're talking about it to go. Here's our dysfunction. Let's talk about it. So yeah, yeah, I think that that is a legacy. And my business has allowed me to provide for my children that a job would never have. Sure. Right. If you think about my daughter working with me in, you know, middle school, learning entrepreneurship, and it's no coincidence. She's buying companies, selling companies, leveraging companies, because that's all she saw around her. Yeah, she learned right? it. Absolutely. Look, and they just want money. So, you know, like my dad, get a job. I got a job. <laughs> <laughs> I taught him how to be an entrepreneur young. Like, I'm not giving you no money. Uh -uh. <laughs> You're going to come in office and earn some money. 
Oh, so I've got up here, um, Susie, I've got the PowerYourProfitsBook.com, guys. So you can go there and pre-order it. Um, it's shipping in September, did you say? Yeah, September 22nd. But listen, 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 Linda. Listen up. <laughs> When you go and buy the book now, so all those little spreadsheets, I give you six of my favorite spreadsheets, the ones that I've said I felt so dumb at, then I created these spreadsheets. So you get six of those. You get the Wisdom and Wealth course for free, right? You get Power Your Profits training for free. So we give you about $5,000 worth of product so that while we're waiting for it to come in, I don't want you to start wait to wait for your right. book. You're working now. You're starting You're now. now. I need you to get now. So you go buy the book, then you take your come get the receipt from Amazon or for indie book. We've got several Bards of Nobles. You just put your name and your receipt in there, and we'll give you instant access to all those all those freebies. Perfect. Beautiful. My way of supporting you in the journey so that you can start having the breakthrough now because I'm I'm immediate. Like I don't want to wait till September. You don't have to wait till September, girl. I got you. We got yeah. lots of free stuff, you know, all the time. So. Awesome. So yeah, so go grab your book there. I got a couple, I got a couple just off the cuff questions for you, Susie. Just some fun ones. I got a couple off the cuff answers. You never know what you okay, that's, that's you never what I love. Love. come out of my mouth. <laughs> I love it. That's what I that's what I love about off the cuff. Okay. So first, my first question is what has been the greatest success to you? And how do you define success? Mm, that's juicy. Um, you know, the corny one is my children, but I just talked about them. So I'll, I'll share another one with you that in the moment it was my biggest tragedy, mm -hmm. right? So in 2007, the market crashed mm -hmm. and I had just sold my business for millions. I had about 10 million in assets that I had worked 20 years to accumulate. We were in real estate, so we had real estate investments, we had rental properties, we owned a building, we had a training and development company, we had another company um, that when I sold the primary company, they didn't buy that company, and that company needed the training and development company to survive. So we were, we were dumping about 30 grand a month into that company just to keep it at par. Mm -hmm. And when the market crashed, I crashed. Mm -hmm. Right? We literally, what felt like overnight, it was a, it was a three year period but, but it felt like it was overnight that 10 million that I worked 20 years for was gone. Mm -hmm. And I remember Sonny being on the floor crying and not like a pity party, but crying to God as why, what is the lesson? I, I have been a good steward. I have walked my talk. I've given in my community. I, I did what I thought was right. I followed all the experts. I, I did all the strategies that, you know, to build your wealth and accumulate wealth and, I was just devastated. And my partner of 17 years, my husband, who was also my business partner, couldn't handle the stress either. And so he moved to Singapore. He said, I can't do this. Mm. And so my best friend who said, I will never leave you, left me, right? My, my wealth that took me 20 years and laying on the floor and I'm like, I don't have another 20 years. Mm. I, can't, I don't, I don't wanna do this. And I heard a voice in my head that said, you don't need anyone. I got you. I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. Get up. Get up. This will be your best lesson. This will be your biggest victory. But get up. Get up and share. And my ego and my shego was in my face like, I don't want to I don't tell people I just lost ten million dollars. Right, right. Yeah, I'm like, no, let me lick my wound first, right? <laughs> yeah, give me a minute to catch my breath here. <laughs> And what I realized, that's when I called Lisa, is like, I, I don't know what to do. And mm. she's like, just do for me what you did for you. Mm. I'm like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So then I have purpose again. And wow. then I, I'm like, oh, well, I can do that. I, I can do that in my sleep. Right. right? So all of a sudden, I got out of me. It wasn't my pity party anymore. I was like, let's build this thing. So we built a, one of the largest transformational companies, right, in our industry together, right, from creating possibility and in a recession, right? So very much like the economy now. Yeah. And so what I do know is how to make money. Yeah. What I do know is how to follow the bumper rails. What I do know is if you do this, you get this. That's systematic, right? That's like making an omelet. You know how to make an omelet. Here's the ingredients. Here's what you do. 
I don't have to make millions. Here's the ingredients. Here's what you do. And so that was the biggest win for me because now I was like, oh, I know how to do. Oh, there I am. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that reignited my passion for what I was doing. Going, I have to teach other people how to do this. Oh my gosh, if you can do it once and you can do it again, it wasn't a fluke. And it didn't take me 20 years. It took me 20 years because, again, I had my PhD, right? I had my high school diploma. That's all I had. I didn't have any kind of acumen to teach me. But now I had 20 years of acumen. Yeah. I, had, I had seven businesses, nine total, but seven multi-million dollar businesses. I'm trying to find the camera. Seven multi-million dollar businesses. So I'm like, oh, there's the proof, right? I think we talked about it earlier. We kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater yeah. to do it. That's not who I am anymore. It's not, but it doesn't go away. Right. right. So that's really, you know, it's, it was the hardest lesson, but the biggest lesson. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. That's a great one. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Girl, okay. you got me crying. Sonny got me crying, y'all. Sonny got me crying. I, I'm known for that, so it's good. <laughs> Look, as an interviewer, guys, when you make them cry, you're like, yes. <laughs> okay, my other question is, um, what if you could have a billboard anywhere in the world or all over the world, what would it say? Wealth is your birthright. Mm. Ooh, do you guys hear that one? That's so good. Wealth, Wealth is your birthright. Wealth is your birthright. It's not for some of us. It's for all of us. Yeah. It's for them over there. It's for you over here. Right. I think you, you know, I grew up in a poor community that was never discussed. Well, we didn't talk about money ever, right? There was no, here's how you balance a checkbook. Here's how you build your wealth. Here's That wasn't discussed. Mm -hmm. And so I manifested wealth from my mind and my creation, right? I found the right mentors. I did the work. I was disciplined. I studied, right? And I still do those practices every day. I had to reinvent my belief system about money. Yeah. My belief system about prosperity, my belief system about des deservability, right? And so my mission is that we all see that, hear that. We teach our children that. Yeah. We, we live in a country that that's possible. Mm -hmm. Not everywhere in the world that's possible. Nope. Whatever yep. our dysfunctions are in this country, right, right. there are many of them. Mm -hmm. We all know we have many of them. Yeah. But what we do have is opportunity yeah. and we have entrepreneurship. So it's your birthright. It's my birthright. Got you. Love it. Wealth is your birthright. Okay, last question I have for you. Um, what is one thing that most people don't know about you? Mm. Mm -hmm. I can't tell all my secrets. I'm just wearing it all on my sleeve. <laughs> That's how I am, too. I have to really dig for this one for myself, too. <clears throat> I think that um, when people meet me, what they find surprising outside of, you know, just my journey of coming from nothing and, you know, building what I've built is um, my two daughters are African-American. Mm -hmm. And especially now, you know, in the season that we're in, raising two black children in a white world was not easy. Sure. And I didn't realize, I mean, I know there's prejudice. I know that. We, we all know that. Right. I grew up in a large Hispanic community. You know, I, I grew up in a, a, a prejudiced home. Um, I'm a loving heart and a loving spirit. And I just, I told you, girl, he had a car, he had a checkbook, he had muscles. <laughs> I, he had the things he needed. And he was chocolatey delicious. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and so raising these women and, and really experiencing firsthand how cruel our world can be because of the color of your skin. Yeah. You know, that you don't, you don't look a certain way. And so it's been for the last 35 years, my mission to wake up my community, mm -hmm. to say what you say, you don't even know you say. People say racist things and they don't even know they're saying racist right. things. It's be aware, be aware of what are we really standing for together? And don't just talk about it, be about it, right? right? Be about standing up for your sister, standing up for your brother, standing up for equality, whether that's women equality, men equality, race equality, right? Just stand up for it. And so it's, I wanted my girls to be powerful women, mm -hmm. not a race, right. to own their beauty, to own their full lips, to own their curly hair, to own their round hips, right? To go, I'm just a beautiful woman. I'm intelligent. I'm smart. 
So you, when I first, when people would meet my, we call him a husband, because he's not my husband anymore. He was him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they would go, oh my God, you didn't tell me your husband was black. I'm like, well, you didn't tell me your husband was white. Right. <laughs> Why? You me, your husband was Hispanic. Why got, you don't walk in the room like, hey, I got a black man. Like, no, that's not what you do. <laughs> it was the most bizarre, so crazy experience. Like, huh? Why didn't he, it didn't occur to me to tell you? <laughs> Did I tell people like, I mean, I knew people would judge me, right? But it was like, okay. And so, me bringing, I think that's why Lisa and I's relationship was so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like, we stood for that sisterhood. We stood for, you know, we're one. And we got each other and we need more of that in the world. We need we need women coming together, races coming together, standing together for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Right. And stop pointing the finger and yeah. go, let's come together. I know we're trying to as a country right now. And there's trying. Like I can't try to stand up. I'm either standing up or not standing up. Yeah. And so your voice matters. You know, silence is violence. Like see something, say something. Right. Be brave enough and bold enough. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally, totally agree. I, I have a brother that um, came into my life. Uh, we, we didn't actually adopt him, but I call him my adopted brother because he took our name and everything and, and he's black. And, um, and, and so I also, I experienced, I lived with him when I had my child when I was a teenager. And so we lived together. And, um, and so we experienced the racism of a white woman, a black man, and a white, white baby. And so, oh, you no, know, like, okay. that. You with that. <laughs> not only was it that, then it was okay. And now you're a whore too, because now you're another guy, you know, like, so there was, right. like, there was, there was a lot going on and, and, and it was um, shocking because it wouldn't, it wouldn't even be a thought in my mind until somebody said something or somebody followed us around or, right. or what have you. And so in, in today's, um, culture and where we are today, it's, it's so past time. It's right. so past time. And, you know, the one thing I just hear so much in your heart and in your words is um, what an amazing, um, what an amazing job you did raising your daughters to be strong, beautiful women because of um, what they learned, you right. know, what, what they learned that that a lot of times people think it's in spite of, but oftentimes it's because of. Yeah, there's a consciousness. Like I had to choose mm-hmm. differently than you know, and I don't know if I would I don't think I would have been as impassioned. Sure. Right. As, you know, but I had to be. Mm-hmm. Right. I had to be something different for them. Yeah. I had to create a community where they saw themselves. Mm-hmm. I had to insert myself in communities that didn't want me. Look, they didn't know they didn't want me when I first started this journey, but they're mm-hmm. like Who's the white girl? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So it's on both sides. It's not on one side. It's just on both sides. You yeah. know, you've experienced it to go, okay, how do I how do I create this for my children and now my grandchildren? Mm-hmm. Right? To go, I, I want them to know that it was so sweet. So my grandchildren's are very pale. So my daughter married a very pale white man. Mm-hmm. And so my the baby, uh, she's seven now. So right. So we're sitting at the dinner table and we were talking about, you know. Uh, uh, her college and she's gonna have the best of both worlds she can put black and she can put female and you know we're just talking about she goes wait 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 what a minute what wait what i'm black <laughs> yeah baby you're black and she looks at her mom she goes you're black and she's like yeah and she looks at me Gigi, you black <laughs> no baby i'm not black and she looked at dan who's my man and she goes g paul you black he's like no no baby is papa black and papa is black right uh-huh. papa's black yeah, maybe Papa's black. It's like she doesn't see the color. No, mm-hmm. beautiful and so cute. Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm black? Uh-huh. I'm like, you, yes, baby, you are. It I was love so that. Cute. I was oh. like, oh, there's healing that's, that's occurring. Right. That's the video we need. That that right there is the video we need. That's what needs to be on the media. Yes. That and just to bring it together. And and I want to say it's the baby steps, right? It's that baby step where. I know we all want to come together and we want to part the Red Seas, mm-hmm. right? And so I know my little part of bringing communities together and being a stand and, and supporting my African-American community and supporting my sisters and brothers, right? It's the little things that you do on a daily basis that make the big difference. I didn't combat this, you know, in over in a year. It's been 35 years of fighting this fight for equality for my children. And selfishly, it was for my children. 
sure. and wanting to make a different life for them and not have that experience. And, you know, and it's all around us to go, okay, that, that's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Right. And until you're put in that situation, you don't even know it exists. I, I have to say I was naive. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't understand. I was just in love. Right. Like, and then to see babies and why are you judging a baby? Mm -hmm. Right. It's a beautiful baby with a cute little butt. And you know, you're like, Oh, you're so cute. Not, not everybody thinks that. Mm -mm. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank well, thank you so very much for sharing all of your, your wisdom and sharing a little part of your, of your soul and your spirit too. I really, really enjoyed it. I know all of our audience did. So please take a moment to thank Susie. Um, her book power, your profits book.com go there. Buy it now. You'll get it in September, but you'll get all the goodies, five thousand dollars worth of goodies in the meantime. Spreadsheets. Hello. Some of, some, of us about that colorful. <laughs> some of us really like all that detail stuff. So you know. Um, thank you so much, my friend. I hope all of you have enjoyed this. And uh, just remember that you can come here every weekday, 1 11 p.m. for off the cuff with me, different guests on different days tomorrow i will be doing readings so come and join us tomorrow thank you so much everyone thank you susie bye thank you love you guys